Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome back. So in today's video, I am going to share with you some tips for current start point. And I'm not exactly sure that I've covered that before. I'm going to be showing you an example that relates to this beautiful quilt, this panel quilt that I was working on the other day. And this is kind of how I see myself transitioning with these videos. Pretty much if something comes up in my studio or with a layout or something that I'm working on that I want to share with you, I'm just going to make a note of that, I'm going to record some video, and I'm going to bring it to you. So let me take you inside a simulation, let's talk a little bit about current start point, and then I'll meet you right back here. Let me talk you through what I have on the screen before we get started. Again, I have a line drawing that's just a representation of a quilt. I'm working on a little project that's 36 by 45. I've got my pantograph open, and what I want you to do is pretend that I'm standing at this quilt and I already have this first section of rows stitched out. All right, and what you're going to notice also is if you look really closely, I have my pantograph connected at the end of the rows, and that's so that my pantograph can stitch in both directions. I have some additional YouTube videos up on how I deal with pantographs, and as always, you're, w you're welcome to contact me to take one of my online classes. In my pantograph session, we talk about a lot of things with pantographs, and one of the things that we uh, discuss is how to connect them and stitch in both directions. Okay, so I want to walk you through what happened at this little quilt that I was working on and show you how I addressed it right at the quilt. So first things first, this beautiful pantograph is called Espresso and it's by Patricia Ritter and I purchased it through Digitech. All right, so First things first, pretend that I have stitched this out and that I have advanced my quilt because I stitched as much as I could there in those first passes and I needed to advance. Okay, so we can pretend that. The other thing is I've put my simulator into position. If I was actually at my machine, I would go and take my machine, put my needle into position over the little spot that I had marked and move on. Okay, because I'm working in simulation, I'm going to go ahead and open up the pattern. If you were at your quilt, the pattern would already be open. Okay, so once I'm in position, I'm advanced, I'm just going to do a reposition on start point and I'm ready to go. Let me just do a select all and refresh so that we can see everything and then I'll close this box down over here. Okay, so what had happened when I advanced and was ready to stitch this next section of pantograph, I had basted my quilt along the right-hand edge here. Then I went over to the left-hand edge and I began to stitch before I had basted this down. So let me just go ahead and do that a little bit. Because I have both of these rows selected right now, I need to skip ahead to that new pattern that I just opened. So there I am down there at the pattern. And I want to make sure over here under my select button that I only have that part of what we're working on selected. Okay, so that's just a little simulation thing. If you were at your quilt, this is the only pattern that would have been selected. Okay, so let me just turn that off. All right, so what I did was I began to stitch over here on the left-hand side. And even though I realized that I have my glide foot on, I was still just a little bit nervous about the fact that this wasn't basted down. So what I did was once my machine got out into the batting area, I just went ahead and hit pause. All right, and what I wanted to do was take a minute to baste down this edge of the quilt. All right, so I'm in the batting, right? And I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but over under the quilt menu, under reposition, there is a little button called current start point. And basically that is where your needle is as you're stitching or when you pause your machine. Okay, so I'm right there where my machine is paused. Now, the next thing I'm not sure if you guys are aware of is the status button. And I'm not sure if I've talked about status button in one of my other videos. But it's a very, very useful tool. The thing about the status button, however, is it doesn't come on automatically. So if you look at my screen right now, there is no status indicator up here. 
Okay, so when you boot your machine up for the day, it's not going to be there. But if you come under Quilt, Stitch, and right on under here is Status. If you hit the Status button, it'll turn on the Segment Counter, which basically tells you where you're at when you're stitching. Now, I didn't want to stop the pattern because I wanted to come back right to that spot where I had left off. So basically, I didn't have to do anything at this point. I'm not, repeat, I am not going to stop my pattern. I'm out into the batting. Pro Stitcher knows where I'm at. I've turned on my status because I like stitching with that on. And all I did was take my machine, put my infinity into basting mode, and I went along down here, so you're going to, again, have to pretend that I went along down here and basted the edge of my stitch, or of my quilt. Now, since I was down here at the bottom after doing that, and I knew I needed to be back up here, and I also did not want to break my thread, I just stitched back up in basting mode, up close to where I had stopped. Okay? Pro Stitcher knows where I'm at. All I have to do is resume. So I just want to make sure I don't have a tie-off. I don't need a tie-off because I'm in the batting. And I don't even need a pull-up because I've already been stitching. So all I'm going to do is resume. Pro Stitcher knows right exactly where I left off because of that current start point, And it just went along. So I was happy at that point. Now, I'm going to let this stitch out as I talk to you about the other situation that happened once I got closer to the right-hand edge of the quilt. So as this was stitching along and I was looking at it, I realized that I hadn't double-checked how far down I was going to be once this third pass of this pantograph was stitched out. Okay, I hadn't checked that. And although I was pretty confident in the manner in which I had set up this pantograph, it was a new one for me. I had never stitched it before. And all of a sudden, I had a little moment of of panic. Not really panic, but just a little moment where I was questioning me questioning myself. Did I have enough space to stitch three passes? Well, I wasn't sure, but I had already begun the stitching process, so I didn't really want to stop. Also, my pantograph is connected edge to edge. In other words, it's connected at the end of the rows, so it's going to stitch in both directions, which meant it wasn't going to stop over here for me, which meant I couldn't check myself as far as how close I was to the rail. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop the pattern. I'm going to move myself a little bit further to the edge of this pantograph, and I'm going to show you what I did on the right-hand side. So I'm just pretending now, moving my machine. I'm getting to a spot closer to the right-hand edge. I'm going to do a quilt, new start point, and I'm going to start over there. All right, and then we'll just run. So as I got to the right-hand side of my quilt, and I realized I wasn't sure about my positioning, once again, I let it go a little ways until I was out into the batting. So let's just watch it go for a few more seconds here. Once I knew I was out into the batting, I went ahead and hit pause again. All right, now this is what I did this time. Again, Pro Stitcher knows where I'm at, so I, I don't have to worry. I'm not going to stop my pattern. I'm just going to grab my machine, and I'm going to bring it down toward my rail. Okay, in simulation, obviously, I don't have rails. So you again, going to have to pretend. Let me go ahead and just close that box. All right, so I brought my machine down to my towards my rail, and just with my eyes, I could see that, yes, I am definitely going to clear this row right here. This is the last row of stitching. This row right here is only going to be used for my repositioning, so I knew that I was okay. Now, had I thought of that when I was over here doing my basting, then I wouldn't have even had to have that little panic moment. But I hadn't checked it when I was over here, so now that I was off into the batting on the other side, I just decided to go ahead and check it. Okay, so I was fine. I could go ahead and hit resume. Pro Stitcher was going to go back up there. Now that time right there, I didn't stitch up there. I could have, but I just grabbed my thread and hold, held on to it and let my machine go back up and stitch. All right. I want to talk you through one additional little thing that could have happened, and I want you to be aware of it and how you can fix it. So let me go ahead and close that box again. 
Let's say in this instance, when I went to check it, I brought my machine down, and lo and behold, I didn't have enough room. What if I hadn't left myself enough room? What am I going to do about this last pass of this pantograph? In that case, what I would do is sometimes I just advance just a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys have done that. I didn't even unclamp my machine or, or you know, take off my, my bungee cords or my Velcro, whatever you're using. Sometimes I just advance just a little bit, but I need my I need to get back at to the right spot when I do that, right? So what I do is I bring it up here and under where wherever I stopped. So I'm just going to try to get it back up here in position wherever I stopped. And this can be out here in the batting, or this could even be somewhere in the center part of this pantograph. I was choosing to do it in the batting so that if there was a little bit of discrepancy when I started back up again, it was going to hide it out there in the batting. Okay, what I would do now is I would drop my needle. Okay, so just do a needle down. Make sure to unengage the motor. Okay, so at this point you want to make double check that your motor is unengaged. All right, you're just going to go ahead and I'm going to use the pan feature. You would actually be advancing your quilt just a little bit. Okay, so just a smidge. I'm going to go up there just a little bit. Now, I need to re get myself re restarted again except I've advanced so now I've affected my positioning so what you can do at that point is just go over back under the quilt menu under reposition and click on that current position because what will happen is pro stitch your nose where your needle is right because you've advanced with it down into your quilt or into the batting in this case Pro stitch your nose where your current start point is because that's where you paused. Okay, you have not stopped your pattern, you've only paused. So if you click on current start point, your pattern is going to get readjusted right to where your needle is, which is what you want because you've advanced. I usually make sure and pull my needle back out of the quilt, so a needle up. Then before I start stitching, because I want to make double sure that I have advanced enough, I'm going to grab my machine again. I'm going to come down. I'm going to make sure, yes, this time I can clear that last row of the pantograph. I'm good to go. I can move my machine back up there, or I can just let Pro Stitcher move the machine back up there when I hit resume. Again, I don't really need a, a pull up or a tie off over there. I'm out in the batting. So I would just hit resume and continue on. All right, so that was just a little bit of a fix that I did. On the left-hand side, because I had forgotten to baste, I just paused myself out in the batting, went ahead and did that, and because Pearl Stitcher knew where I was, it started back up again. On the right-hand side, because I realized I wasn't sure if I was going to hit the rail, I just went ahead and paused over there, came down, realized that I was fine, let Pearl Stitcher go up and, and resume. The second part of the demonstration today was just a little bit of a hint about if you are a little too close to your rail and if you want to advance a little bit, you can accomplish that by just putting your needle down, go ahead and hit pause. You can um, advance a little bit and then when you get yourself where you need to be, you're just going to do that quilt, reposition over here, reposition yourself on the current start point, and resume. It's really pretty simple. If you just think through it, what's happening, really pretty simple. All right, I hope that helped everybody. Until next time, it's MK. Bye-bye. As you can see, even though that I do a lot of my prep work and planning inside of simulation, sometimes when I get to the machine, things come up. And I have to deal with those right at the machine. This was a perfect example of that. Now, I didn't show you in this video, but I want you to think about current start point as it relates to advancing your quilt. Some of you out there have machines with limited throat depth, right? And you might be stitching a larger type of a block or a pattern. And maybe you need to advance a little bit right inside of that stitching pass. So think about that a little bit. Think about how you can use that in relation to current start point. And I'm going to fade out of the side here so that you can get one more good look at this quilt behind me. This was pieced by my really good friend Pat and she gave me permission to use it in this video. Alright everybody, that's it for right now from MK to you. 
Happy quilting. Bye-bye.